Hello learners and welcome to your video tutorial on the ballistic pendulum. Now, in a ballistic pendulum you will generally have a ballistic and a pendulum. And so here I've got a bullet with just a mass lowercase m traveling at an initial velocity v naught. It's going to hit, strike, and embed itself in my pendulum who has a mass uh, capital M and it's on a string with a length L. Now, when this bullet hits and embeds itself in the block, the block will swing up and swing out. And here's our bullet inside. And so it will swing up a certain height h, and it will swing out a distance, and call it x. Now, this is a very popular question because it combines a lot of different subject areas. Uh, for instance, it hits the block and embeds itself. Well, there you've got an inelastic collision. Now, it hits and it raises up to a certain height, which means there's a gain in potential energy. So you've got energy to contend with. Now, it's going to hit, embed itself, and swing back and forth. So you've also got an element of simple harmonic motion. So we're going to tackle these piece by piece and investigate how each variable is related to the other. So let's say that this pendulum swings out a certain angle theta. Now, in order for this to swing out, it has to have a certain amount of kinetic energy immediately after the collision. Now, if it's an inelastic collision, that means that kinetic energy is not conserved. Which means, we can't just say, okay, the bullet has a certain amount of kinetic energy, well, that's going to equal my potential energy of the bullet block system. No, 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 no. Because kinetic energy wasn't conserved during the collision. There was work done on the bullet by the block to stop the bullet inside the block itself. Now, how much work is done we could calculate, but we first have to utilize the fact that it was an inelastic collision, which means we are going to use the conservation of momentum. Now, <clears throat> we're dealing with a bullet with a mass m, a speed v naught, and here is my block with a mass capital M, and let's just say that it has an initial speed of zero. Our pendulum is at rest. Now, does that mean that every problem you're going to do ever, your pendulum is at rest? No. But we're just going to work that example where it is. So, using the conservation of momentum, we can get the velocity post-collision. Now, how we're going to do that is utilizing the conservation of momentum. So, my initial momentum, m1v1 plus m2v2, is going to equal my final momentum, which is the momentum of my bullet block system. So it's an inelastic collision, which means the two objects are going to hit, stick, and move together. So they're going to move as one mass. So I'm going to treat it as one mass. Now, if I make M1 my bullet and V not its initial speed, well, M2 is my block and it has no initial momentum. My final momentum is going to be little m plus big M times V final. So my velocity post-collision, or V final, is going to be m V naught divided by little m plus big M. Now, <clears throat> that is my speed immediately after the collision. And it's the speed of the bullet block, bullet block system beginning of the swing at its lowest point. Now, speaking of at its lowest point, let's look at a pendulum swing. So here I've got my bullet block and they are leaving that point with a certain speed v final. Well, they're going to swing out to a certain height, which we said was just h. Now, at that point, my bullet block pendulum system is going to change direction, which means at this point, it is going to have no velocity, 
which means it has no kinetic energy, which means it has a max potential energy, which means at the bottom, at the lowest point in a pendulum swing, that is when my kinetic energy is at a maximum and my potential energy is at a minimum or zero because we can think of my height being zero. Well, we just solve for the velocity right here, which means we can get the kinetic energy at that point. So utilizing the conservation of energy. And let's ignore any frictional forces due to the pendulum or air resistance or stuff like that. So no work done. All initial kinetic energy. And at this point right here, I have no kinetic energy. So it's all potential due to gravity. Well, my kinetic energy is going to be one half my mass, which is the bullet block system, times my velocity. Well, my velocity was that right there, mv naught divided by m plus m. Now, it's one half mv squared. Well, let's plug in v final for right now, and then we'll substitute in that variable here in just a second. Equals my mass, which is m plus m g h. Now, v final is that velocity post-collision, which we got as m, little m, v naught, times, or divided by little m plus big M. So I'm going to take this and substitute it in. So I've got one half. Look at my mass on both sides. Cancel it. So I've got m v naught divided by little m plus big M squared equals g h. Now, I could solve for height by just dividing both sides by g. Okay. Well, there's another trick that we can do, and it utilizes the fact that the length of the pendulum doesn't change. That L is the same. Well, my height is right here. I raised up a certain height, H. Well, I form a right triangle here. There's theta, and this line right here is delta X, how far out the pendulum swung. Well, this length right here inside the triangle is L minus H. And if you know the length of your pendulum and you know maybe the angle that it swung out to or they told you how far out it swung, you can solve for this side of the triangle and you can solve for height. Height is going to be very important because the height will tell me how much potential energy I have at the top. And how much potential energy I have at the top, I can use that to maybe backtrack to the speed I had post-collision. And I can use the speed I have post-collision to figure out maybe the initial velocity of the bullet. So you will either work this way, going towards final state, or you might work back and work back to your initial state.